Urinary tract infections are extremely common. Around one in two women and one in 20 men will get a UTI in their lifetime. Plus, once you've had one UT challenge, you're way more susceptible to another in the future. That's why you just need Just Thrive's UT123. This product can actually prevent UTIs while maintaining your urinary tract health. UT123 targets both immediate and long-term relief. We've all heard to drink cranberry juice for your urinary tract, but did you know that for the full effects, you need the whole cranberry? Not just juice, but the skin, flesh, and even the seeds. Well, UT123 uses superior ingredients that utilizes the whole fruit. This supplement truly is the full package. So if you're someone who struggles with the constant urge to urinate, a burning feeling when you pee, pelvic pain, or just want to be proactive in your urinary health, Just Thrive is for you. Just Thrive is so confident you'll love their product that there is a 100% money-back guarantee on every purchase made through JustThriveHealth.com. And for a limited time, you can save 20% off site-wide at JustThriveHealth.com with promo code SEXWITHEMILY. That's JustThriveHealth.com and use code SEXWITHEMILY for 20% off your order. You're going to love it. Listen, alcohol is just out in 2024. There is a rising trend of going alcohol-free or being sober curious, and alcohol, the truth is, it's just bad for you and can famously impair your sex life. So if you're looking for another way to unwind, relax, or just have fun, I cannot recommend Vaya's THC gummies enough. Vaya has gummies for every occasion. Whether it's to improve your sleep, I love their sleep gummies, I take them everywhere, your mood or your focus, they even have an aphrodisiac gummy called High Love to boost my arousal levels. High Love has a unique blend of cannabinoids and aphrodisiac exotic herbs that are known for their libido enhancing effects. So I've been using Vaya for a while now and I absolutely love love them. They're a super trusted company. They use premium hemp, natural ingredients, and they're known for their premium indoor THCA flower. All their products are made here in the U.S. They got quick and discreet shipping to all 50 states so you can all enjoy them, not to worry, and also super affordable. So head over to viahemp.com and use code EMILY at checkout to save 15% off your order. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Use code EMILY at checkout for 15% off your order and let me know what you think. Into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. Hey, Emily, you got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. A girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. Well, you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex relationships and everything in between. For more information, go to sexwithemily.com or emilymorse.com. We'll get all your sex question answered and uh, you'll feel like a better person and have better sex. Just happens that way. So thanks everyone for listening. Happy Monday. And I hope everyone had a great weekend. Today's show, our guest is going to be Rachel Kramer Bustle. She's calling in. She's the co-editor of a new book, The Best Sex Writing of 2012. She's written a ton of erotica anthologies. She writes for New York Magazine, all kinds of blogs. And um, we're going to be talking about Fifty Shades of Grey. Have you heard about this menace, Fifty Shades of Grey? They no, call it I mom haven't. porn. It's like this erotica that all the moms are reading. No. It's like this huge trend right now. Like my sister-in-law in Michigan, like everyone's talking 50 about Fifty Shades it. of Grey? Yeah. It's like, it's all about women being dominated, like BDSM and women. Is it novels or is it in videos? Or what it's is a it? novel. It's a book. Really? It's like erotica, like straightforward erotica. It's like we, mom, they call it mom porn because moms are all really into it. Mm-hmm. And the the women, the woman, the heroine or whatever in the in the book is like she's she gets into she's like this young girl who gets taken by her professor or something. I'm, I haven't read it yet, but and then he's run to dominating. It's like a total dominant relationship and bondage and all that stuff. And women around America are freaking out. Around Sounds the world. pleasant. They're getting all turned on. So anyway, today's show is brought to you by Hot Rocks. It's an organic certified aphrodisiac for both men and women. For women, it gives you more energy, stronger orgasms, natural self-generating lubrication. It gives men more stamina, harder erections. This is like the libido enhancement drug that everyone's been thinking about, everyone wants, and this one actually works. I've been taking it now for about seven weeks. And I have more energy, and I uh, am hornier. So it's awesome. It's Hot Rocks, R-A-W-K-S, and it there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you don't like it, you can return it. 
but that's I promise always good. it'll change the world. I love 30 day money back guarantee. Well, that's people that shows that they're confident in their product. Yeah, exactly. So it's uh, Hot Rocks, R A W K S dot com, libido enhancing, organic. It's all organic too. And it puts you in a better mood. Can't you tell that I'm really happy? Very happy. Don't I seem bubbly. happier? Um, yeah, I'm bubbly. I had a good weekend. It was fun. I had a former intern who was my intern like five years ago. She was 19, and now mm-hmm. she came back to town for um, a conference. She's married. She's 24. What? She said the summer working for me, because she lived in Michigan, that mm-hmm. came out for the summer for three months to work for me. Amanda, I, you might have met her. You probably did five years ago. But anyway, yeah. she said it changed her life. And really? She, she said that it, she... Not just because of my internship, because a lot of the experiences she had around it, like we had that lingerie party and she had dressed in lingerie and she met a lot of dudes and had fun and well, she maybe, felt like she grew into a woman that summer. Yeah. Maybe she found out everything that she didn't want to do. Oh, by and, looking at my life? Yeah. And then now she's married. She couldn't believe I had a dog. <laughs> she almost lost her mind. Exactly. Yeah. She's like, I was ready to get married after that summer. <laughs> It's really funny. She's like, I don't want to be like this for the rest of my life. Right. I got I to gotta get locked so out. So that's what she did. Yeah. That that's was cool. fun to see her. I love all my former interns. They always come by and they're all doing great things. And then um, I uh, just hung out with friends. Went to Target. Yeah. Target. Target. Which one do you go to? There's South there's, San Francisco. Wow. Well, there's a couple. I never go. There's two of them. I never go down south. I just did. I left the city. I did that. I hung out with friends. They were watching the baseball game, I guess. Mm-hmm. I wish I ran into you at Target. That would be fun. Were you fun. there? Uh, I was in that area, but I didn't go oh, into Target. Oh, I went yeah. to Daiso. You did? I had Are a freaking heart attack. <laughs> what? I, I mentioned Daiso. I know. To you, that's right? why I went. Yeah. I was like, oh, I have to go there. Menace said to go there. Yeah. Is it a chain everywhere? Yeah, there's Daiso a bunch Japan. Of, yeah, it's I don't like, know if it's national, but there's a lot here local. Oh my god, it's like all these little Japanese products and organizers. I like my lost my mind. Yeah, it's I like, screamed. A, like a dollar type store. Dollar yeah, it's types. really cool. Yeah, it's amazing. So that was fun, and then I just hung out with friends, and I would spend a lot of time with my dog, walking her dog park, whatever. Nothing that exciting. Had sex. Mm-hmm. How was but that? But nothing was fine. I wasn't feeling that great this weekend, so I really oh. was like that girl who didn't feel well and didn't really want to have sex. Happens. Happens That's to the best cool. of us. Yeah. What about you? What'd you do? I, well, I didn't go to Coachella Music Festival. I know. Doesn't is, it kill you every moment of the day? It does, actually. It's it does. friggin' painful. Because you remember, I, I planned that out like eight Mon- months. Yeah, eight, you're like, I'm eight going eight to Coachella. It's I'm a going music to- festival in the desert. Yeah. In Palm Springs. And I had my tickets. I had VIP, everything. And then there's this opportunity at work. So I was like, oh, it's not a good time to leave. I really got to put my heart into uh, my job right now. And so I was, I didn't go and I wasn't really tripping about, I wasn't tripping out about it until two days before the concert. And they said there was going to be a Tupac hologram on stage. Right. Now, if you don't know this, my name, actually, my nickname Menace came from a Tupac song. Oh. So I'm a big fan of Tupac. If you're growing up in the Bay Area, you have to love Tupac or right. you have to move. Right. So if you go online and you Google Tupac hologram, it is scary how real it looks. It looks like there's a ghost standing on stage. That's crazy. It's insane. People said that they went to the show, they had nightmares after because it looked so realistic. That's crazy that they did that. It's insane. So it was like he was on stage and you saw it? Can you see it? Yeah. It looks like he is standing on stage and it's just projected with all this light. Oh I don't know God. how the hell they that do it. That is so cool. And then Snoop Dogg walks on stage and they're like dancing together and like talking back and forth. It was, it's. Oh, that's uh, freaky. It's effing I would trip, think dude. I was losing my mind. It's. I would think I'd taken some serious hallucinogenics. Oh my God. Which oh, I, well, I can imagine the people that are on drugs down there that were yeah, just that losing are freaking their minds. out. How is it two weekends? Or so what do people do in between people who are down there for two weeks? Well, I was going to actually take the week off. I wasn't oh. going to be around and I was going to go travel around, but. Oh, well. I Lollapalooza, Chicago. That's my favorite. I'll be out there. Okay. But I did do two fun things over the weekend. Okay. I went to a chocolate festival that was at Pixar Animation Studios. I, love I got chocolate. to go there. So I got to try chocolate from uh, independent vendors nice. from all over. That was Were delicious. Were there a chicks there? Because I think chicks would like flock to yeah, a chocolate festival. Yeah, there was definitely festival. a lot of chicks there. Not and your type? Um, a couple, yeah. Okay. Maybe my type. And then the next day, I told you. I went to the Taco Festival oh. in San Jose, California. Right. Holy S. The Taco, fe- the taco Festival was out of control. They, they sold Ta- out. 
really? thousands of people. It was sold out. They couldn't let any more people in the venue. What, what, what was just like different booths with tacos? No, it was like taco trucks, like all lined oh. up and they're all competing. How many tacos other. could you eat though? I have one taco. I'm done. I'm ready to go home. I had about six tacos, wow. but they're not like giant ones. I had right. like calamari Did you, taco. Like, vote on the best taco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so good. That's so oh fun. You love San Jose. Fun. Yeah, and I, uh, I had sex. That was cool. With who? The same girls last weekend or different? <sighs> Same girls last week. I was so gonna she kind of like your thing. One. No, I don't have a boyfriend like you or girlfriend. a girlfriend. <laughs> is she go, are you, are you, but it's this girl wants something more. or She's casual. Uh, yeah, yeah. She, wants she does. Yeah. She wants. You know, some how of the can menace. how can they not? How help can they have the, a little piece yeah, of you and not, not want more? Was love. it good sex? Were you really drunk or were you sober? I was actually moderately moderately sober. I had some, you know, champagne. I'm really on a champagne kick lately. I am too. I had champagne last night. And I, I really want to buy a bottle of Spade Champagne. So if there's any listeners out there that want to donate a bottle to me. How much is it? <laughs> it's like 300 plus dollars. Oh, is it that good? Yeah, apparently. I watched Shaz, Shaz of Sunset. I've yet to watch it. I've I'm been shocked hearing you people. haven't watched it. Yeah, It's on I Bravo, which is our network. I know. Um, They did a champagne. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Mm. You should have seen it last night. Or I think yeah. it was a rerun. La- or it was, I, was watch- I was catching up on old episodes. This is on mm-hmm. Bravo. And I know it's like it was totally mindless fluff. But I feel yeah. like since we are going to be on that network in a few months, we have to. Uh, I should be up on all the shows. And so one of the girls on the show, one of the women, Gigi, always talks about how she only drink Cristal and the best champagne and all mm-hmm. this stuff. And her friend's like, I believe if we did a taste test, you would not know <laughs> the bad yes. champagne from the good champagne. Yeah. Yes. So he had five flutes uh-huh. of champagne at his house. He had a, did a big thing and had uh-huh. everyone there do taste tests of like one was like a really bad bottle. One was like Domaine Chandon uh-huh. or whatever. Not Domaine Chandon. What is that? Cristal and yeah. d- whatever the best you don't drink. Are. I don't drink Cristal no more. Why? Because Jay-Z says not to. Why? Is it bad? He says, he says, I don't know if they are, but he says they're racist. Oh. So he goes, everybody drink spade. So I'm okay, all about Okay, that's why you want spade. Well, anyway, it was five different kinds and she yeah. couldn't tell the difference. She could tell which one was the bad one. Yeah, the that's worst, easy, The though. cheap one. Yeah. But the rest, she couldn't tell the difference. But she always was like, we have to get this or we have to get that. Yeah, because she has funny, a Because Menace sip. thinks that I, I don't like the two buck chalk that they sell at Trader uh-huh. Joe's. And Menace thinks that if he did a taste test with me, I wouldn't be able to tell. We should do a taste test. Let's do it. Here. Let's do a taste, a blind taste test. Okay. We'll put them all in and you tell me which I've one. I've got a drinking game for us to play. I like, brought it with me. What? But we have no alcohol, but we're just going to play if we have time. Okay, good. It's really fun. That's fun. I so we yeah, learn a lot about each other. This is pretty much my my weekend. That and fun. dude. What? What are you going to be on TV already? Jesus <laughs> H. Is everyone asking you? Yeah, everyone's like, oh, when is it air? Well, blah, we're blah. not sure. It's um, it's misadvised on Bravo and uh, Bravo TV. And I they don't know when it's going to – it's for sure airing. And it could be July. Mm-hmm. It could be September. And so we're yeah. not sure yet. So it's either July or September. And um, we should know probably in the next few weeks. And we will let everybody know. Wow. So you can watch it and set your DVRs. And it's going to be crazy. We shot – for two and a half months, it's eight episodes, and um, I haven't seen any of the footage. I don't know how they're going to edit it. There's a lot of menace in there, like saying mean things to me. No, and, I'm the um, sweetheart. <laughs> no, you're not. And uh, which is why they loved menace. So I don't know, but people keep asking me when it's going to air, and I think that they they really don't know yet because the network tries to figure out what other shows should be aired mm. along with it and all that stuff before and after. Are you excited? I wish it would be after a Real Housewives or something. That'd be I know. Awesome. That'd be awesome. Have yeah. you been watching it? Like, do you watch the Atlanta one? Uh, Yeah. Atlanta. I don't like it. It was on last I like night. Atlanta I and Beverly it. Hills. That's all I like. Right. I don't like any of the, of the other ones. And oh, Jersey a little bit. A little bit. Right. Smidgen. Well, our show's different than Real Housewives because the three women on my show don't interact. We don't really interact. Yeah. Which is cool. So I don't know how they're going to be. How it's an hour long show, piece it together, but I'm yeah. not sure how they're. They're probably just going to cut from one chick to the next. And yeah, cities and stuff. like Different that. cities and how we're. You know, we're going on. I went on a bunch of blind dates one yeah. of, with one of your friends. <laughs> I can't uh, stop watching Mob Wives though. Oh, I heard that's amazing. I love Big Ange. Big Ange. <laughs> that's really her name. Amaz- oh yeah, you got to see her. She's amazing. Big Ange. <laughs> I'm just dying because Why? she's she's awesome, man. She's and it's a hilarious. reality show, right? Yeah, yeah. She's hilarious. And they're really mob wives? Yeah. Can't their husbands get arrested for being pointed out as being mob? Well, they've been getting arrested lately. Because of the show? I don't know because of the show, but they uh one of the one of the ladies' husbands turned rat 
and he started ratting out everybody around him. Oh wow! Yeah, There's so they all started going. It sounds at, dangerous. The show. They all started going. Yeah, I, I met a couple of them down at the Grammys, and I was a little, I was a little Star-struck? afraid to, talk, a little afraid to talk to them. Oh, because you're afraid they were going to have you killed or something? No, it's just like when you when you talk to them, they're the real deal. They're right. like, this is not a front. This is we are part of the mob. What channel is it on? Uh, VH1. Okay, I'm going to watch yeah. it. It's on my list. I swear. Okay, I've got a little bit of sex in the news. What do you I don't, got? There's not a lot of celebrity stuff on here at all, but I was watching. There was something that I read today that I thought was interesting about a celebrity couple, but I can't. Just like Brad and Angelina. Yeah, they got, got engaged, engaged finally, cares, and they though. got the blessing of. Because remember, they said they weren't going to get engaged unless uh, same sex could right. get married, and now they're like, "What's up with that?" But then. You know, the alliance, whoever represents the gay and lesbian. Um, oh, they gave them their blessing? They gave them a the blessing, yeah. Oh, that's nice. And then, uh, did you see the photos that it got posted this morning of Hillary Clinton partying it up? I heard, read about it. I didn't see the photos. Yeah. She's partying it up? She's drinking beer. There's a picture of her drinking beer. You can tell these pictures are totally taken undercover. Right. And she's dancing. They said that she showed up to some bar in Columbia ordered uh, 12 beers and a bunch of shots, stayed there for like a little over a half hour, and then uh, Left. just bounced. That's yeah. so fun. And they showed pictures of her the next day like yawning and stuff. Oh, that's car. funny. Yeah. That's funny. I haven't seen it, it's but cool. I read about it's it. It's like I posted it up online so people can see the photos, and then a couple of the reactions was like, oh, is she doing this on taxpayer money? It's like, dude, So what? Come the woman's on. been working her ass off for yeah. 20 years for this country. Let her have a friggin' beer in Colombia. Yeah, come on. Seriously, people. people. Get over it. Um, okay, well, my sixth the news we got here is uh, experts push Hong Kong residents to have more sex. If you thought SARS and bird flu were the worst epidemics to Hong Kong, think again. Surveys have shown that Hong Kong has the lowest sex drive on Earth. What? They need some hot rocks. Hong Kong. And sex experts are urging the crowded populace to expand its horizon. Apparently, the career-driven mentality, financial pressure, and lack of privacy due to young people's inability to move out of their parents' home until their late 30s have all contributed to the lowest fertility rates in the world and bleak prospects for singles. Thankfully, the socially conservative city is growing more open, hosting the fifth annual sex culture festival and a large sex toy convention. Which all the sex toys, a lot of them are made in China anyway. But that's yeah, but you point. know, it's so overpopulated over there. I don't know why people are. Well, they could have out. sex, and they could have intercourse, yeah. and not have babies. But um, so I thought you'd find that interesting. I don't know. I thought I would find that interesting. That the lowest sex drive. Okay, so this is interesting. Chins are the new boobs. You'll appreciate this. Chins? Chin implants see huge spike because of skyping. So you know how everyone's like skyping now and doing video yeah. conferencing. Apparently, everyone thinks their chins look fat. I don't know if you think your chin look fat, but I know you always no. have things about looking at yourself on camera. So, um, I just so, look fat in general on camera. Oh, That's why oh, I don't like Oh, is that looking. it? Yeah, okay. not the no, chin. No, you don't. Okay, just so the whole chin sector. body. So it grew 71%. <laughs> what? And there were, more, there were more chins being done last year than boob jobs, butt jobs, and liposuction combined. They, uh, oh. And it's, the trend is due to the growth of video conferencing technology in the workplace and the benefits of having a strong chin in business. That's very odd. But do you know who had um, like cheek implants? Who? Was uh, Winnie Houston. When really? they did the autopsy, they, they listed everything and she had cheek implants. Oh. How the hell does that happen? You just – people do it. A lot of women do it. But where do, do you it. get that in without people seeing scars? I don't know how they do it, but they – a lot of women do it because it makes them – it's like plastic. It makes you look younger. Yeah. Because your face, when you get older, it drops – yeah, and but it looks are, so like hollowed out when you do the cheek implants. Ugh. Did she look hollow? I mean, but she looked good though before she died. Yeah, didn't they find in her like cocaine and marijuana? And, they found a lot of stuff. <laughs> she was having a good night. Sad. She died. I know. Okay. Terrible. Senior sex video rubs audiences the wrong way. Trying to stop the rise in STDs among Florida's elderly population, the U.S. organization Safer Sex for Seniors has released a video campaign featuring old men and women pretending to bang in challenging situations. Have you seen this? No. They're in challenging sexual positions. The ad agency behind the 30-second clip defended its strategic choice of shock humor, but many who cherish the idea of pure chaste grandmas uh, have said it devalues a worthy cause. So there's this video out there that's trying to promote safe sex among seniors because seniors are actually not using protection because they don't know about it and they're good. There's all these STDs. So it's a safer sex video, but it's like old people having sex. And it's been controversial. 
Yeah, this doesn't seem appealing to me at all. To watch that? Like, yeah. Okay. 34-year-old virgin makes up for lost time, creates baby-making business. What? Mm-hmm. The 42-year-old uh, Dutchman sleeps with 15 women a month now in a bid to make their dreams of having children a reality. He began donating sperm to clinics nine years ago, then found out there was a market for natural conception and never looked back. He boasts an 80% success rate. He currently has 45 girls and 35 boys all around Europe with 10 more on the way. And he's not making wow. any money. He's just doing it. He's just banging chicks? He's just banging chicks and getting him pregnant. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. He's had them sign a contract. Every partner signed a contract saying he doesn't have to pay child support, but they're saying they might have to overturn it. That He'd be broke. He'd be in jail. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so I thought that was... That's fascinating. Why can't you chicks. sign a piece of paper saying it's all good? That's wrong. That's wrong. Everything's wrong yeah. in the world. Just use protection, people. No, uh, he's trying to get he not him, pregnant. but everyone else yeah. in the world. If you don't want to have to pay child support, is what I'm all saying. Right. Okay, we've got some emails. Thanks everyone okay. for emailing us at feedback at sexwithemily dot com, or you can just go to our website sexwithemily dot com and uh, click on the Ask Emily, or you can get in touch with me through Facebook, Twitter. Instagram, Sex with Emily. And you can find Menace at all those places. White Menace. Of course. The White Menace. Not the White Menace, but White Menace. Dear Emily, please, please, please get Kegel Camp on the Android market. I refuse to buy an iPhone, but all my girlfriends are raving, and I got to see what all the awesome fuss is about. From Carrie Lynn, Greencastle, Indiana. If you're an Android developer, contact me, because I don't have a good Android developer. I'm actually going to take a class. Okay, make my app. It's called Kegel Camp. It's selling like crazy. I need like to take crazy. 80% of the profits, though. Fine. 50. <laughs> In eight, I'll do 80, 50 50. 70. I'll do 50 50. 65. Can you really do it? It's not that hard. I can I give don't you know. all the files. Honestly, I don't know if it's that hard or not, but I'm going to definitely take I mean, class people have been asking me. Half the world is on Android, right? Or more? Yeah, it's just, it's up there with iPhone. Oh, it's crazy. I mean, that, so Kegel I mean, Camp is. Switch iPhone, people. It's, I love I've had my both. iPhone. Like, yeah. I'm obsessed. You had Android. I did not like it. How did you let me have that droid for so freaking long? Because your service provider didn't offer iPhone at the That's time. That's what it was. That's yeah. what it was. So um, I have an app called Kegel Camp, if you haven't heard me talk about it, ad nauseum. And it helps men and women do their Kegel exercises and have better sex. And I walk you through it with my voice. It's a very easy to use yap and, yap, app, and it's very popular, and you should all buy it. Oh, do you know what else? Um, Tell speaking me. of apps, we're here at the Stitcher Studios in San Francisco. And you can download the Citra app. It's totally free. That's S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R for your smartphone, Android or iPhone or whatever the hell you have. You download it, and all you do is search Sex with Emily, and you're able to listen to the show on the go. It's pretty awesome. On the go. It's really easy. So that's a great way to do it. We love Stitcher. And what else was I going to tell you? Something that had to do with technology and A new app? Uh, Not a new app. Instagram for a billion dollars? No. Oh, sorry, I'll come up with it later. Kills me. But, oh, no, no. I was just going to talk about uh, XM. Also on XM oh, Radio. Oh, we're on Sirius XM. Oh, we're doing it this Friday, 420. Oh, we're going to yeah, be on Playboy. Can you do forgot. it Friday night? Write it down. <sighs> Menace and I are, okay, we're on Sirius XM. I love XM. doing it, but they're killing me with the Fridays. I know, I know, I know. You should already be drunk by the time we're doing it. Yeah. I think we're doing it at 7. But if you if you listen to Sirius XM, we're going to be on Playboy Radio taking callers. This Friday night, I'll get back to you at the exact time. But we're also on Extreme Talk XM 165 from 6 to 7 Pacific. Uh, yeah. Um, and 9 then, o'clock So East don't Coast. forget, it's 420 too. So we got to yeah. talk about marijuana smoking. Marijuana smoking. 420 is a big day for that. All right. Okay. Hey, Emily. My name is Katie and I'm from the UK. Loving the show. Been listening for a while now and just became a Friends with Benefits member. I myself am very interested in the subject of sex, and if any of my friends have an issue with it, it's me they come to. I've been inspired by you and want to start my own show here in the UK. I'm thinking of doing it on YouTube as I don't know anything about podcasting. I'm only 23, but I don't think my young age would stop me, so I was wondering if you had any advice for me starting out on this. Love from the UK, Katie uh, Buckingham Bucks. That's where she's from. Sweet. Premium member. Okay, Katie, uh, just do it. Just start doing it. That's what I did. I started doing this podcast seven years ago in my living room. Uh, YouTube's not a bad idea if you want to do a video. Can you do video podcasts at YouTube, though? Uh, You can't video podcasts, but, I mean, you can release episodes. And putting, you know, the subject of sex in the video uh, probably will get you quite a few views. And, you know, being a 23-year-old female 
talking about sex shouldn't yeah, be hard. Yeah, with a low-cut shirt. I'm sure you'll do fine. I'm sure you'll do fine. But um, <laughs> but, but YouTube is not podcasting. Podcasting, you can go online and look up a lot of different ways yeah, to do it. Yeah, how to podcast. It's really easy it, to do it from your computer. Yeah. It's just, actually more work than doing a YouTube video, though. It is? Yeah, yeah. Why? Because then you got to get RSS servers and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, hosted, and then you got to... Submit it's a pain it in the iTunes. ass. Don't do it. Yeah, Just it is. Kidding. It is. It is a pain in the ass it compared to ass. a lot of things you can do. I know. But um, I wish you luck, and I think that you should just start doing it, and don't worry about your age, mm. and I'm sure it'll be age-appropriate, and yeah. you'll just start talking to your friends and, and having a fun show. if you show. blow up, we, we uh, Remember, get 10%. Yeah, we get 10% of every, every everything that you make. Um, <laughs> but that's cool. Okay. Dear Emily, saw this article about a complaint form and thought of your gay downstairs neighbors. You can film, you could fill one out for their loud lovemaking unless you are enjoying it. And they can fill one out for you when you forget to wear your Uggs or slippers and walk around mm-hmm. your five inch or is it 10 inch heels? This listener very knows. 12 inch this heels. This listener knows me very well. His name is Greg. He writes all the time. And, um, Greg, you're awesome because it is – I can't – it's just funny that people – I have an, a problem. I wear my five-inch heels. I get in trouble. I put on my Uggs when I get home now because they make no noise. But the freaking lesbians below me and next door to me have very loud sex. So he sent me this article, let your annoying neighbors know how you feel with this simple complaint form. So there's a complaint form. We're not all blessed with perfect neighbors. In fact, we're not always perfect neighbors ourselves. We're all capable of being disruptive and annoying. So when that happens, we need to call each other out. So there's a form, and you slip it under the door, and you check off all the relevant problems and leave it at that, or you can fill in the blanks for more detail. Dude, when we were shooting the Bravo Misadvised, the Bravo reality TV show that yeah. we're soon going to be on tele- national television in, the camera crew's 15-person crew was in my house, in my apart- my little tiny apartment building with the, with the thin walls for yeah. two months, and my <laughs> neighbors were not happy. Hated you. Hate. I got hate mail. <laughs> I got mean letters. Not hate, but just like, can you let it? Can you can let us know when the crew's coming back? I gave everyone brownies and sex toys, and Dude, I tried I, to make them feel better. I don't know what to do about my neighbor too. I got a oh, noisy upstairs right. neighbor. I think this do guy this, like, this form. I think this guy sleeps on the floor or something and leaves his cell phone on the floor and it just it like vibrates the ground. You got to know. I told you I already punched a hole in my ceiling. Yeah. I wouldn't do that again. What I would do is leave a note. Can you? Why don't you just write a note and say, "Listen, dude, this you're guy, loud." I seen some emails. This guy wrote to the landlord. And this guy seems like a real fucking dick. <laughs> like really? he doesn't seem like he would care about the. Uh, well, I the care. Letters. Whenever I get a letter, I take off my shoe. I try to like because I feel mm-hmm. bad. Like when my dog was pooping in the neighbor's yard and I didn't clean it up by mistake. I was drunk when I, I seriously almost went up to his house and beat the shit out of him. Yeah, that's why maybe <laughs> better to write a letter beforehand so you don't beat the shit out of yeah. him. <laughs> Right? True. Ah, uh, true. But it's not bad. I mean, it do- maybe just because I'm so – I want everyone to like me and I mm-hmm. – I, it feels bad that my neighbors were upset. I don't care if this guy likes me. I just want him to shut the F up. Yeah, you got to write a letter. He probably doesn't know. Okay, we can call our guest. So let me just tell you a little about her. Her name's Rachel Kramer Bustle. She's been writing about sex for a really long time. She's a co-editor of a new book, Best Sex Writing 2012, along with lots of erotica anthologies. Anthologies. She writes for New York Magazine, all kinds of blogs. She, um, seriously, she's been on CNN, Wall Street Journal, Fox News, uh, Sex Diaries, Salon.com, The Village Voice, and she writes about cupcakes. All right. She writes about a lot of erotica, BDSM. Cupcakes. Ooh, I like that. She writes about cupcakes. Is that yeah. a nine or a four right there? Uh, nine. Nine. Yeah. On the second one. All right. Let's try that again. <laughs> I write, yeah. So Rachel Kramer Bustle. And we're going to talk to her about how she start, got started writing about sex. How and did you erotica. hook up with Rachel Kramer Twitter. Bustle? Twitter. Tweet. Twitter. Tweet. She tweeted me. Wanted wow, to be on the look show. look at you. Look at me on all on Twitter. You know, tweetish. I got to do Instagram more, though. You're like tweetish, like Swedish tweetish. Oh, dude. What? It's not working? I think there's something wrong with your Skype account. Oh, yeah. It says uh, they told me that it was gonna um ex- yeah, expire, expire today, but I tried to. Okay, is there another Skype account we can use? Uh, I don't believe so. Do you want to log into my personal Skype account? <sighs> okay. Okay. Now, hold on. Oh my god, that's so weird. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. If they told me this today that it was expiring, and I put in my credit card. <laughs> no one cares. Okay, All right, hold on. We'll switch real quick. You type it in. Okay, we'll come over talking. here. Whoa. This is going to be on camera. Whoa, for the first time ever. No, I've been you on. You should be on camera. 
No, well, talk to the awesome company you work with to get one in here. Hello. Hi, everybody. I'm on camera while Emily is typing in her information to see if we can get you um, the guest. <laughs> I don't know how to fill time when you're not talking with me. All right. We seem to be having it work, I believe. Oh, now. I said upgrade. Oh, Look. what the hell did you just do? Be careful. Because okay, you can stop our recording right now by accident. Home. Here, I, I can look at it now. Okay. <laughs> Very Sorry, everyone. We are right. so professional here. All right. I can't believe my Skype count did that to me. I put in my new credit card, whatever. Yeah. So we're talking to Richard Kramer Bustle. All right. And uh, we're going to call her right now. <laughs> That's funny. Life is okay. funny. <laughs> I love my life. Okay, here we go. Okay. We... Um, and we have to talk about Fifty Shades of Grey, which they're calling mom porn right now. It's like the biggest... It's the – it's like this hugest sensation now with like moms across America. Great. Like 9,000 guys are trying to hit you up right now. <sighs> yeah. Hold on. Really? No, I said you had messages. People love you, me. You, you, My brother. Yeah, it's not, it's not working either. Why? It's logged in. It says uh, – you need to, yeah, you need to upgrade this account too. It said to upgrade it when I logged on. Yeah. So. Uh, Do you have a Skype account? No, I don't use Skype anymore. I use Gchat. Oh, I could call her from my cell phone. Does that not work out well? Uh, yeah, you can do it. I mean, that's the only thing that we can do. Okay. Go for it. Okay. But then. I can't talk, but it's okay. No, I want you to talk. Should we just postpone it? What? Postpone if you it? want to. I don't care either way. I'll call her. I usually don't talk to the guests that much anyways. Yeah, you do. I just you piss just make faces. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. This is uh, it's really interesting. We're keeping a ghetto. Hood. Are you calling her? Yeah. Okay. I'll be waiting. You can listen. You can talk to. Yeah. Hello? Hello, Whoa, Rachel. So loud. You can turn down. Hi. How are you? Good. It's so good to talk to you. We're doing it. Our Skype wasn't working, so we're calling you from my cell phone with the speakerphone on the thing. So hopefully you can hear us okay. I can. Can you hear me? I can hear yeah. you perfectly. Perfectly. Okay, great. So, um, so, yeah, it's nice to talk to you. I know we've, sc- we've uh, tweeted, but we don't really know each other. I know, and I just stayed with Jimmy Waxman, so I know you guys are friends. So yes. Yeah, it's like world. You just saw Jamie Waxman? Yeah, I just stayed with her in San Francisco. Oh, you were here and I didn't get to meet you? I was there, but I was like running around like crazy. I, I know. Okay, you got to come back. You got to come back. So how did you, I know you, you've written a ton of books about erotica and your website is Rachel Kramer Bustle. That's Bustle with uh, B-U-S-S-E-L. Correct? Right. Okay, so how did yep. how did you start writing about sex? You've written a ton of books. Um, I was in law school in um, 96. And I had been reading some erotica before that, but I was reading a lot of it during that time. And I just thought, oh, these are short stories. Like, I could write one. And there was a call out around that time for stories about celebrities. And this is dating myself, definitely. Um, So this was 99. And so I wanted to write about Monica Lewinsky. So I wrote about her for a book. Can I say... Words on the air. You can say whatever the hell you want. I can say whatever I want. Okay, I just was like, uh oh, the book's called Starfucker. <laughs> so I wrote the story called Monica and Me, and it was this fantasy basically about me meeting Monica Lewinsky and producing her. That got published, and that was really exciting. I still remember holding well, that book, and it was also published in Best Book in Erotica 2001. And I remember standing in a bookstore, which no longer exists. Book of course. I was, at it. I was so excited. Like, I had tears in my eyes. It was just so cool to write something on my computer and then see it. Exactly. So, um, that really was just. That's so cool. Scary. And you've been doing it ever since. You've been writing. So, what? what's. And then you. And you write a lot about bondage and erotica. What got you? What sparked your interest in that? You know, I think it's a really interesting and fun topic because you can play with all sorts of different. Um, things that you can choose in terms of bondage. Like, 
like equipment. Um, there's a story in one of my best bonded erotica anthologies, I think 2011, about using um, tables in an office to tie someone up. I mean, you can really use almost anything. I mean, I think there's the psychology of it, which with anything about sex, I'm always interested in the psychology of why some people are into one thing and some people are into something else. And so I think you can play with that from both sides. You can play with the psychology of why someone wants to tie someone up and then what are they going to do with them once they're tied up. Exactly. And why someone wants to be tied up. And actually, there's a really interesting story that I didn't write that, uh, that's in my book, The Fun the Drought of the 2012. And I read it out loud the other day because it was so compelling. It's called Melting Ice by Shoshana Evers. And it's about a woman who's so into being tied up and she's not dating anyone and she can't really find a guy who will do that with her. So she ties herself up and she has these handcuffs and she's waiting for this ice to melt to get the key out to unlock herself. And I thought that was so fascinating because for me, like I can get into bondage. I like it sometimes, but I like the interaction with another person. I don't know if I would like it. Right, myself. like it. Exactly, like it that much. So you're into bondage in your personal life? I am. I mean, not all the time. And it's not like if someone wasn't into it, it would be a deal breaker. I don't really think I have anything that if someone wasn't into it, it would be a deal breaker, really. But I do like bondage. I mean, I don't think I, I don't do it all the time. Right. But, you know, but you're into it. I, yeah, yeah. So what do you think about this whole Fifty Shades of Grey? I was trying to tell Menace, he's here, he's uh, my co-host on the show. Can you hear Hello. him? We, our phones are a little weird here. But, but uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, why is such a huge phenomenon right now? I don't know. I just know that, like, it's everywhere. Because I've been traveling a lot this past week, and it's at all the airport bookstores right up front and center. Um, and, you know, I just, I don't think it's that different or new, you know, it's a romance and the, the protagonist is young and very inexperienced and her, you know, this guy that she's really into is older and kind of stern and like showing her the ropes, so to speak. Um, but I think what's interesting to me is that I had trouble reading it and connecting with her because I felt like so much of it was about him telling her what to do and you know, I think that can be totally hot. I mean, right. I do that in my personal life. You know, I might tell someone what to do. Like, they might tell me what to do. But I think that when you're writing about it, if you're not hearing why the person thinks it's hot, then it can just be like someone telling you what to do. And that, that's not, you know, I think you need more of a context of right. why giving the orders is turned on by it. And that's the kind of writing I like, where someone might be doing something that a lot of people would think that I would never want to do that or that's disgusting or that's whatever but if you can get into the psychology of why that would turn someone on I mean someone might want to you know crawl around on the floor and eat out of a dog bowl and not every day and not with everyone but in the right context because they're they have a dynamic with someone where that's sexy but I feel like for me Fifty Shades of Grey didn't give me that dynamic it only right. gave me one half of that really and I felt like she was kind of doing a lot of the stuff just to please him. And that is where I kind of lost. Right. It, you, don't, you don't see what's in it for her. But there's been so much. I mean, you've written so I mean, how many books? You've written, like, so many books. It would take me the entire I show. Yet. like, 42 books. Yeah, yeah that's a lot. A little <laughs> Oh, my God. And so yeah, and this book, yeah, that's a lot. And I'm sure a lot of your books have the elements of Fifty Shades of Grey. So I'm just I'm wondering why this one just took off. They're calling it mom porn. And my mom called me and was like, have you heard of this Fifty Shades of Grey? You know, it's like. Yeah, um, I think it's I, I don't know. I mean, maybe people have just been eager for something, you know, that's explicitly about that. But it's not like that's something new. I mean, there is. Sarah Flying and Gail Green, the food critic, wrote these best-selling erotic novels in the 70s. And, but I think there's been erotic novels that have captured the public's imagination. But this one is just, first of all, it came about very quickly. Like, people started asking me about it, and I hadn't even heard of it. I think right. the trajectory was really fast. It's not like she was building up her career, or people knew who she was, or, you know, it, it, it wasn't you just really ha- Right, you just never know. Twilight fan fiction element. Now, I haven't read Twilight, but I don't really see that much of a connection between this bondage novel and 
like what's going right. on in Twilight. Yeah, you know? me neither. I don't know. I feel like I should check it out. Yeah. But what would you say, Rachel, since you know all about erotica and literature, what, what's a good starting point for someone who's never read erotica but they might be interested? Like where would you even start? I mean, I think some of my like kinkier books, those are those are pretty intense. So I if you're not sure if that's what you're into, like I don't want to necessarily say, Oh, read about thinking of bondage but there's ones that are more varied. There's one called Orgasmic that I really like that all I edited it and it's all stories about female you know, orgasm but from really different points of view. There's oh, I love it. Chemistry. And chemistry is about a woman who's turned on by chemistry and being in a science lab and um you know, she's scientists, and I'm not into that at all. Like, chemistry scares me. I'm like, oh, I almost failed that in, in college. But, but she, again, like, she makes me get into the character who's turned on by the scientist and all the smells and the kind of power a scientist has to make stuff explode. And, you know, and I think that a lot of people start out writing around at the, certainly I did, about stuff that they're interested in. Right. But one of the bigger challenges is, to try to write about something that doesn't turn you on, but can fiction, to fictionalize it and make it something that sounds sexy right, to you. Right, right. It's a good point. People. Yeah, you might never know. And uh, also, it's a good way for couples to explore. Like, do you have any books that you recommend for couples to, like, read together to kind of explore what would make them feel good sexually? Maybe they can yeah, learn something. there's a lot out there right now. Um, I edited a book called Irresistible, which features all couples, and some are new couples, but some most are definitely long-term couples dealing with everything from affairs to death in the family to, you know, work and home life and just different things that real couples go through. And I think reading erotica, whether you're reading it out loud to each other or maybe you're each reading it on your own and then comparing notes on what you like the best, I think can be a safe way to think about something that you might want to try or just to share a fantasy. Like, I am all about talking dirty and sharing fantasies while you have the freedom when, when you're with someone who you feel like you can say, oh, I want to do this. And in the heat of the moment, you're you're not really saying, I want to do this tomorrow. You're right. saying, I think about this and this turns me on. And I feel like sometimes people don't always get that. Like, they think you, you mean, I want to do this, you know, right now. And that can be a lot of pressure. It's, right. it's everything you said in the heat of the moment of fantasy you know, meant that you wanted to do it right then, uh, I think, you know, that would curtail a lot of people talking dirty. Right. So I think there's definitely something to be said for erotica being a way to test the boundaries of just, or just say certain things out loud that you might, you know, not know how to say. To exactly. Partner. Exactly. Because I'm always telling couples, like, you got to find out what her fantasies are, what his fantasies are. But this, but reading erotica would be a good way to kind of read it together and discuss, like, well, that kind of turns me on or just discuss, you know, the different yeah, things in it. maybe the story turns you on just because it's an interesting story. It doesn't necessarily mean that, um, you know, you see yourself in that. Well, maybe, you know, it's a story about a man and a woman and you're a male, female couple and maybe the woman sees herself, uh, in the role of the man in the story, you know, right. you, I think because it's fiction and there's still, it's like in, when you're watching a movie, you don't necessarily identify with the character who books or sounds like you. You may identify with some other character. Exactly. I got to read more erotica. It's like been on my list forever. I read some like in college, but not, I want to read some of yours. So your best sex writing of 2012 is what's coming out right now. Or what you're that's working out. on. That's actually nonfiction. That's more thinky. Like, I call it a book for sex nerds. So there's stuff in there about slut walk and um, non-monogamy. And okay. And, and, you know, female orgasm workshops. And there's just all sorts of uh, stuff that I think makes you think and makes you, you know, consider what's going on in the world, not just in your personal life, but, you know, outside of it as well. Right. Okay, cool. Well, we'll have to check that out. And then just tell me quickly about your cupcake obsession. How does that relate? Where did That's that come like from? non-sexual. People sometimes are like, what does that mean, cupcakes? I'm like, that means what you think it means, cupcakes. You're like, I just and like cupcakes. Yesterday I judged it. Well, I, I was at a cupcake, cupcake camp in Seattle, which is a, a charity event. And uh, people, like hundreds of people came and ate cupcakes. And there was a cupcake eating contest where you had to see who was going to eat the most cupcakes in three minutes. And it was kind of crazy. It was 
Oh, cool. love that. You menace yeah. would love that. That's so yeah, cool. I that's yeah. awesome that you do that. So everyone can check out your site, Rachel Kramer Bustle, B U S S E L. And that's Kramer K R A M E R. It's all gonna be on our website. And then we can link to the show and we'll be sending it to you. And thank you so much, Rachel, for, for sharing this and oh, good luck with everything you've got you. working on. And I hope to meet you some next time you're in town. Come say yeah, hi. Next time I will definitely let you know. Okay, cool. Thanks, Rachel. Okay. Have a great day. Bye. Okay. I want to talk more about the cupcakes. I know you did. I knew your eyes. Your, <laughs> that's when men is glazed over about erotica. Mm-hmm. But honestly, like there was all these like books growing up, like Women on Top and all mm-hmm. this erotica. That all I, those books that uh, what's his name? Um, the famous model he was on the cover of. Oh right, Fabi, Fabio. Fabio. Yeah, like he, but that's what like this Fifty Shades of Grey is supposed to be like that kind of thing, mm-hmm. like appealing to. That's it. awesome that that's coming back. It's coming back, and I want to read it. I'm going to read more. You're going to bring back reading? I'm going to bring back reading. I think <laughs> reading is sexy. Okay, that's that's our show for today. Unless there's anything else that you'd like to add, um, Menace. No, once darling. again, download the Stitcher app. It's totally free uh, for your smartphone. It's a great way to listen to the show, and you can become a Friends of Benefits member. And uh, we just love all of our listeners. So thanks for listening. Was it good for you? Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com.